Hi! Welcome to the 3D Pen Den! When I first started to work with 3D Pen, it bothered me that all the pieces had the same stringy texture surface look. You can avoid this issue for a while as I did by working only linear and avoiding solid objects. But there are strategies which allow you to have a solid object with pretty much any finish you like. So let's look at those. Essentially, you have two basic options. Make a 3D object first and then finish its surface, or make 2D shapes with already finished pattern or texture and then make those into 3D object. For some projects, like small intricate sculpture for example, it is best to make a 3D object first and then work on the finish by smoothing, sanding and possibly painting it. It's time consuming, but sometimes it's the best way to go. For other projects, it is a lot easier to make a flat sheet of perfectly finished surface first and shape it into a 3D object later. Because A, flat shapes are way easier to make and B, you can do all kinds of surface treatments that can be done only to flat pieces. You can, for example, smooth things with baking or ironing without having to sand it. It allows you to create interesting color patterns or emboss textures in a variety of ways, but you need to do that while it's still flat and then form it into a desired shape. This box is just simple welding of flat squares, but it is possible to curve the shapes too, without disturbing the embossed patterns. Let's look at some ways of how to get from 2D sheets to 3D objects. All of them use some form of heat. And which one you choose will obviously depend on the project. Most of the time it will be a combination of some of these. Heat forming is all about how much heat you need to apply and where. Do you need it just soft enough to bend? Or do you need it completely melted? Do you need to heat your project in just one point? or along one line or all over the project at the same time. We are not going to cover how to bake iron, marble or emboss. Those techniques already have their separate videos which you can find in the description. Let's just look at how to get from here to here or from here to here. The simplest way of forming a 3D object is joining two or more flat planes together and you can do that with just using your pen. Joining things with your pen is a bit like soldering process where you stick two parts together by adding an extra hot compound in our case plastic that sticks to both sides and in effect glues the two parts together. The advantage of this method is you don't need any extra equipment, but the cons are that it can look rather messy and it's not a super strong bond. But it works in places where it doesn't show much. It is also possible to join the two flat planes with a wood burning tool. This technique is more reminiscent of welding because you are actually melting together the two parts you need to join. It 
creates a cleaner look and a stronger bond. Yes, you will need another tool, but if you have a 3D pen, you may want to have a wood burning tool anyway. It's super useful for smoothing surfaces and about a hundred other things. If you don't have one yet, make sure you get one with adjustable temperature. Check out the suggestions in the tools and materials section down in the description of this video. It gets trickier as you get to the seams you can't get to so easily. Here I have to do this seam in two parts because that is as far as I can reach with my pen. And that's when I have a pretty skinny pen. Some are bulkier. The skinny heat tool also fits easier into tight spaces, which is another advantage of it. I find the cleanest way to create a corner is by folding the flat sheet whenever possible. Think of it as paper crafts. When you are folding a box, you score the paper to create a groove in it to fold it straight. When you fold plastic, scoring creates not only a groove, but heats the sheet along the fold line, and only along the fold line, to make the fold possible. The shape and size of the tip you need will depend on the thickness of the plastic layer you will need to crease. If you need just a little tab for joining something in a really thin sheet of plastic, you may need just an edge of a slanted tip and use a super light touch to heat score it, but not cut it off completely. And then you can use the same slanted tip to attach it wherever it needs to go. Thicker the plastic sheet, the bigger tip you'll need. This technique is quite helpful in architectural models where you have a lot of patterning and texturing to do. Here I wanted to put in the windows first because while it's flat it's a lot easier. Use something square to help you keep the right angles right. And now I need to worry about just welding one seam instead of four. Of course your fold angles can be any size as needed. In folding you hit just one strategic line of the project, but often you need to heat the entire thing to make it flexible all over at the same time. One way of doing that is with hot water. The advantage of using the hot water is that the water won't ever over melt the project because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit and can't get any hotter than that but it just gets hot enough to get a flat sheet of PLA soft enough to form it into a new shape. Especially if you let it sit in it for a bit. I only work in PLA and it's possible this wouldn't work for ABS. If you are working with embossed sheets, it is especially important not to overmelt it, to preserve the texture you just worked so hard to get, like in the earring project. Sometimes you have to re-dip things several times to get the exact right shape.
By the way, the bracelet, the earrings, and the embossing process all have their separate videos, which are linked in the description. Same temperature consideration goes for steaming. Small detail can be easier to steam than immerse completely in water. Here I want to just style the dragon hair, but I want the rest of the shape to stay the way it is now. If you make the steam flow through small enough spout, you can easily precision bend single strands of filament into jewelry findings or make filament coils. No 3D pens or printers necessary. To form springs, or chains or jump rings, or for chain mail, if you have the need and patience. When you need to soften things even more, then ironing might be a good option. If you watched the ironing video, yes, the link is also in the description. You know that the trick to this is to get the plastic to stick to the top liner, but not yet to the bottom liner. Ironing is a good alternative to hot water forming, with the advantage that the iron shapes tend to be sturdier and more precise, and hold the shape better. Also, if you are forming on a paper cone like I am doing right now, it is not advisable to get it wet. As always, the heating method will need to fit the project. When you need to close your tube or cone, you can also use ironing, except perhaps with a smaller iron. It will stick to the tube and liner while it is still hot, so don't panic and let it cool. Or rub it with a cold wet cloth to get it to release faster. Ironing is also yet another option to make clean corners, especially the corners you do have to join from the outside because the inside space is either inaccessible or just too tight for any kind of tool to fit in it. Now let's say we need to join two parts together. It will stick to the top liner as usual, but here I will let it melt a bit longer until the surface starts looking a little bit glossy like it's getting wet. And that's the point it will instantly weld to the rest of the project. Make sure it's right the first time, because you can't reposition this. Let it cool completely before you look at it, or trim it. I used to think, wouldn't it be nice if I had an iron that sits upside down, so I don't have to hold it like this? And then I realized I actually have one. It is called a hot plate. Just watch the heat. Hot plates get way hotter than irons. So you will have to have it on medium to low, depending on your stove. Melting an area to the point when it will attach to another part can also be done in the oven. This is a relatively small project, but if you have a larger area to melt evenly all over, it may not fit on your griddle or under the iron all at the same time. Just remember you can't bake 3D parts, just the flat parts. If 
you need to form a complex custom curved shapes, the best way to go is a heat gun. This way you can direct the right amount of heat to a very specific area and shape it one section at a time. Wear gloves for this and never touch your surface with the hot gun. It will stick to your project. There are many types of heat guns and some are more useful for this than others, but that topic needs a separate video. All done. And then you just run with it. Custom shaping can also be accomplished with an open flame, which is a pretty common method you've probably seen a whole bunch all over the internet. The advantage of this method is that open flame is super fast acting and widely available as a tool. There are all sorts of lighters, candles and torches around. The disadvantage is that you can overmelt your project in a matter of seconds, not to mention set it on fire, in which case just don't panic and blow it out. So until you get experience with flame, you will ruin a few projects. But it can be used successfully, for instance if you don't have a heat gun. I use this method only if none of the previous nine will work. And frankly, for most projects, one of the previous nine will likely work better, because you can control it more. The best way to practice flame working is to play with your leftovers, which is my favorite pastime. Pretty soon you will know what you can get away with. Just don't practice on components that took you hours to make. The point I'm trying to make here is that you can have any fun surface finish you wish on your 3D pen project. Just sometimes it is easier to start with it. So until next time, go and make something.